Hi everyone, I'm Elviani Mejia and I'm transmitted live here from Washington, D.C., covering all the EP science for Heart Rhythm TV. And I have the pleasure to have with me today, Dr. Shit Kumar, that is, we are covering all the science happening here at uh, ACC, and also Dominic Lenz, that is live, transmitting live from ERA 2022 from Copenhagen. So let's start with you, Dr. Shit Kumar. Tell me about all of these trials happening yesterday, actually, a lot of new things, a lot of uh, hot topics, new medications coming up too. So tell me your insights about it. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, ACC is very interesting. And this meeting has been uh, particularly important for us because um, this is our link to the world of the larger group of cardiology, which is general cardiology. And this meeting, of course, uh, is also in a big way focused on the fellows in training. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us and also early and mid-career faculty members. So um, to engage it's, them early. Exactly. And we've actually had uh, many programs, um, both educational and also, uh, you know, the early career people have been engaged in discussing and uh, talking about the science that was done. A special focus, of course, the meeting was uh, also the, the Jack family of journals. Uh, starting with the main jack itself uh we had a panels of discussion and i'm sure we're going to talk a little bit more about partita results uh and the interesting studies that are relevant to ep that were uh, presented at this meeting and we should also talk a little bit about left atrial appendage occlusion and the leaks in la occlusion device which was was also a simultaneously published paper from this meeting back to you again yeah, so this weekend at ACC, we have yesterday uh, the Pacific AF trial too, uh, presented by Dr. Patel. Uh, we have the residual leaks uh, too, uh, and the implication and prognosis, and also partido trial. That actually, uh, looking at what's happening in Copenhagen, you guys also release uh, the new guidelines for VT ablation. And, and it is good to see how partida actually is telling us and you guys are putting into uh, the paper, what is Partita telling us already? What are your thoughts about it? Uh, I could uh, start off by saying, uh, uh -huh. you know, when we sort of reviewed the entire field uh, in 2019 and over the years, uh, seeing all the guidelines that have come out, it's becoming obvious starting with the first, the IVTCC database with the International VT Ablation Consortium that Paulo Dalabella, uh, Bill Stevenson, Andrea Natali, and um, Dr. Marshalinsky and our group at UCLA put together, we always knew, uh, along with our colleagues around the world, that there was a sort of a, a piece of information there that it actually had mortality benefits. And seeing the Partita results, it's very reassuring that uh, all the time and effort and technology that has come to bear so the world of VT ablation is actually very useful and it's helping the people. It was impressive to see the numbers of Partita trial actually and the reduction in mortality. Exactly. Uh, I think that our guidelines is going to move a little bit to uh, the indication. As we Absolutely, move forward, right? it should. What do you think, Dominic? What's going on there at Copenhagen? Talking about the same line uh, of VT ablation. Yes, well, we actually followed everything what was going on over there at ACC via Twitter. So hashtag ACC22 was really like very visible here. So we saw it all over. So that's this works, social media works. And um, so we also had actually about the T ablation, just a first impression about the new guidelines. They were not, the complete guidelines were not presented, but at least the first changes which might actually occur. It was mainly about, for example, the late ganglion ablation under certain conditions. It was also, for example, some indications concerning ICDs, which might actually change a little bit, particularly in some of the uh, subgroups. And the other thing also was ablation in Bugada. So there were also some very, very interesting things, which might also change the view how we actually see Bugada in the future, and potentially also that we just will ablate potentially earlier in some of them. But well, the final guideline about VT will be then presented during the ESC uh, conference in, uh, later this year. Right, so let's talk about uh, some of the hot topics that you heard 
is beginning here at ACC and then we're going to move to you, Dominic. Uh, so what are the major uh, learning points from this conference and for the late breaking trials presented? What are, what are your insights? What are your insights? Let's talk about that. Uh, thank you. So I, I think the big points to be made from this meeting is, of course, uh, it continues to sort of be very important for us to get the message of what we do in the field of EP to the larger audience of general cardiologists. And it's vice versa. We also learn from them. Um, uh, talking about you know, technical issues, one interesting study, and this is of course very reassuring, this is from Dr. Al Cooley's group at uh, Mayo. We actually had the results where we now have a better approach for dealing with uh, uh, leaks from lateral appendage occlusion devices. Uh, which of course is of great concern for electrophysiologists because if you're doing a procedure to reduce a stroke um, and you actually have a problem with that device, uh, that was a very valuable uh, piece of data that got published this year. It was a simultaneous publication. And I think um, that is one aspect in one extreme, which is the highly technical part. The other part was, as you said, about specific AF and also the studies in atrial fibrillation where we are getting a better feel for the implementation science. So uh, what is important in medicine is what medicine can do and what it's actually doing. So I think that's the, that, that's the big link and which of course is why we have guidelines. And, uh, and our hope is that appropriate patients are referred and, and that the field itself moves forward. So th those would be some of the big uh, lessons from this meeting. And also a huge stress that the American College of Cardiology has reaching out to the world of general cardiology, because I think um, uh, you alluded to ESC. I think societies like ESC and uh, ACC are going to be very, very important because all of us came from that world. We came from general cardiology into EP. And I think uh, this is a, a very good moment to be engaged and linking to the greater field of cardiology. To be engaged, to be connected, uh, it's good to have like two simultaneous meetings happening right now. I was like a keeping track of with all the EP signings happening this weekend. I was like, let me make a note so I can read later, right? Uh, so going back uh, to the Pacific AF trial. So for me, it's just like we have not done yet. We may have a new class of medications coming up for treatment of AFib. One of the concerns that we may have with bleeding, perhaps, who knows? is we may be on conflict thrombosis for from bleeding uh, with this new class of medication. So I think that the future is very promising. Uh, we're looking for other trials coming up. So let's see what's happening. So now I'm gonna go to you, Dominic. Tell me about uh, what's going on there in Copenhagen. Yes, well, I think the main highlight was it was again face to face. So the main thing actually what, what you saw, everybody was happy. Everybody was again happy to connect, to talk to people. So the atmosphere is really great and everybody is just enjoying the time. So this is really nice to see a lot of activities on social media, which is growing more and more and more. I think this is also very obvious. So we, we had, have a, a lot of different formats, how uh, science is presented. There are live sessions, live cases, a lot of cases. So this is also some highlight now compared to the years before. We have poster sessions, di digital poster sessions, on-demand material, which can also be shown on uh, the internet. And um, yeah, finally, the toppings are, of course, a lot of ablation, pulse feed ablation. This was, of course, again discussed, but also, um, yeah, uh, for example, GP ablation for um, vasovagal syncope, for uh, bradycardia. So Tolga Axu actually presented some interesting uh, new insight into this new yeah, approach of, of ablating bradycardia, which is just, just impressive, just uh, exciting. M-Health. M-Health was actually another uh, topic. Um, and also, of course, patient, patients were also re really well uh, represented. So almost in a lot of sessions, also patients actually had talks uh, where they were in, uh, invited and also really, yeah, uh, showed the, the, the oh, other... I love it. The patient yeah. perspective, right? I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, then, then I think an, another thing, this was really the conference of practical guides and consensus manuscripts. So just to give you a very quick impression there, there was a consensus manuscript on arismogenic mitral valve prolapse. So this is really like a new entity, which we will probably see in the future. That's actually a mitral valve prolapse, which is associated with increased uh, sun cardiac 
death risk. And it's also associated with scar in the ventricle. So I think a very interesting area, not just uh, for risk stratification, but also finally for potential uh, targets for ablation. Then a real era practical guide, how to use digital devices to detect and manage arrhythmia. So really a step-by-step -step approach, how to select the right tool for the right patient at the same, right time point. We had also an expert consensus statement on the state of genetic testing for cardiac diseases, which was also endorsed again, like the other consensus manuscripts also by most, by actually all the large rhythm societies and also an era consensus manuscripts on prevention and management of interference of devices. So we are always actually yeah, dealing with this on a daily basis, but there was actually never a really manuscript available to see, well, how to deal with all of those things. And this might be quite helpful. Most of them are now also published on Europace, and at least a lot of information is also available under the hashtag era2022. Which we, we've been following all. So it's interesting how you mentioned that uh, the collaboration, networking, because I remember uh, kind of the, the first publication, it was around like, uh, 2014 in Mayo Clinic about our rhythmogenic uh, bileaflet mitral valve prolapse syndrome. So how far has we become understanding more the physiology of that mitral annular complex and how uh, the implication that it has with the rhythmogenic potential. And now we have more data, more information to help us to risk stratify those patients. So that is pretty good to hear that. And also uh, the fact that we are putting more emphasis in genetic testing for the patient, something that we have to inform and, and be very well uh, a, a prepared to inform the, the whole EP community. There's so much more to know and to, uh, uh, and to tell our patients. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. No, uh, to follow up on that also, you know, in addition to mitral valve prolapse, the data on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is getting to be better, which is another big uh, feature of ECC. And also the basic science data that was presented in this meeting, uh, uh, the, there's a remarkable new data set that was presented from University of Illinois uh, UIC in Chicago, where they've actually shown uh, the molecular mechanisms that could uh, underlie obesity-induced AF. So it's exciting to see progress on all these fronts. And uh, hopefully we wouldn't overlap these two meetings uh, in, the, in the coming years. But um, I'm happy this was the only Zoom meeting we had to take. <laughs> yeah, actually the same for me. The same for me. Yeah. It's nice to see people in 3D. Yeah. Dominic. Yes, absolutely, well, absolutely. Nothing like in-person meetings, like having absolutely. like the person and the, the interaction. So it's good to have. So hopefully next year we'll be together. Uh, and thank you so much for having for, for being with me today and, and putting all that, what is happening in both part of the world with the EP community. Thank you so much, Dominic, for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Shibumar. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, and again. see you next time. And this is Heart Rhythm TV. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.